Bueno, gracias por estar aquí. Se ve que viene más gente que están entrando en el caos. Este, pero vamos a empezar. Y si no, se nos hace más tarde y acabamos en el día. Les presento a Jennifer Dunlop Fletcher. Ella es curadora del Museo San Francisco MoMA, la curadora de diseño que lleva a su cargo how many years? Uh, ten years. Diez años que ha estado a cargo de él, este, la sección de diseño. La conversación un poco hoy va a ir en torno a um, su trabajo. Acaba de abrir una exposición en, en el museo que se llama Diseño en California y yo también acabo de inaugurar una exposición en el Chopo, que es una colección de, de momentos de diseño en México 1999-2015. Y entonces vamos a empezar platicando muy breve de este, del paralelo de estas dos exposiciones y después este, un poco el, este, el coleccionar diseño y cómo funciona el museo este, en cuanto a coleccionar diseño y después qué pasa en México y en, este, en Estados Unidos. Por favor, lo que quieran hacer de preguntas va a estar bienvenido después a la mesa. Y este, va a ser en inglés si no hay problema para ustedes. ¿no? Pero entonces, pues, bueno, lo siento, no hablo español. <laughs> no, but thank you for being here, Jennifer. We're super happy. I think it's a great opportunity. So, We were saying, well, I was introducing and talking about you just opened the show at the San Francisco MoMA. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit of what's happening and then yes, we go? Yes. Uh, so it's called Designed in California. We're really looking at um, designers who uh, maybe come from other places but were attracted to coming to California in the late uh, part of the 20th century, mostly uh, 60s, 70s to the present and why they were attracted to California. Is it an attitude? Is it an opportunity to connect to software and engineering that's happening nearby? And, or is it the uh, amazing uh, climate? It turns out it's a little bit of everything. It's a little bit of an attitude that's uh, a bit counterculture. Is that a word? Yeah. Uh, counterculture. Um, and so the exhibition looks at the moment in the 60s when Uh, designers were starting to question their relationship to corporate corporations like um, Herman Miller or um, could, could they reclaim design as something where they could be empowered to be their own business person they were a little bit worried of losing the identity of the designer in a big corporate um, uh, corporation and so the thinking was through computers designing computers, computers, that the individual would be empowered, that uh, there would be equal education for all. There was an idealism behind the computers. And so the exhibition looks at the moment that the designers are trying to bring in some more ethics, some more social consciousness, and they think that if through the computers this will happen, so they all get very interested in designing the first laptop, the first cell phone. This is an object nobody knows what it would look like, how, how uh, exciting to innovate in this. And then where we get to the today is a little bit of a identity crisis in design. The schools are not sure how to teach uh, design anymore. You can't just teach industrial design. Everyone has to be a kind of software designer and a, um, a product hardware designer. And so the exhibition looks at this moment of some designers going towards Uh, looking at the user a bit like Autodesk and saying, okay, let's be involved in designing the software. Others are going towards critical design, uh, designers who only operate in the gallery system and trying to really only get at issues. Others are going towards new products uh, for the home that are all connected, everything, uh, Internet of Things. Uh, and then others going more towards social impact. Can uh, design problem solve some big global issues? And so this, this is, I think, the interesting of the uh, thing of the exhibition is that in the 50s, everything was so clear, good design for all. It's a bit Bauhaus, you know, function. Easy design. Um, and everyone was on the same page. And now designers are trying to figure out in this uh, landscape what, what they, they have to make a choice almost. I'm gonna, <laughs> before I talk about this, it's, funny that my students are here and so I gave them a, a text that it was about four types of design so yes. it was like Perfect. commercial design, discursive <laughs> design, experimental design Perfect. and responsible yes. design. Yes. So it's exactly. a little bit of what you were telling. Exactly. Yes. 
I mean, you have to choose, but then there are also like no boundaries. No, you start with one. Mm -hmm. That's experimental, but becomes discursive, but then maybe commercial. No, yes. something like yes. that. So that's interesting. And I think that's a little bit about your exhibition. Uh -huh. How can you marry uh, two? Yes, two, right? Exactly. Because. I mean, your show, it's a time of the, you said it starts in the 60s? Yes. To today, no? Yes. So it's more than almost 60, 60 years almost, mm -hmm. no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my show, it's only 16 years, so it's a, a show of collection of memories, designed in Mexico, 1999-2015. And the idea of this show is also to tell a story about industrial design in Mexico, industrial meaning more analog objects, meaning more everyday objects, no, like uh, tableware, a uh, sofa, a chair, mm -hmm. no, no computers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and also like raising a question like for students to go and see what's happening or can you, can you get in touch with the history of industrial design in Mexico? And then if there's an institution that will Knowledge or acquire this uh, history by the objects or by the authors of the objects, you know? So it's a little bit uh, a mapping and it's um, this collection of moments or memories, you know? Talking about the, the designers I, I've been in touch or I've known through my career, you know? And, um, and also about the, the importance of collecting design, which uh, takes us to why museums have design, you know? Or, I mean, when we grew up, it was the the idea of an art museum, no? Well, art goes in a museum, and then design everyday objects. Why are they considered art, or why are they, they in museums, you know? So, which I think there was a beautiful text, uh, quote in your text, mm -hmm. um, that is, uh, every, uh, everyday objects uh -huh, uh -huh. really are uh, a kind of a snapshot of yeah. our culture. Larger. Yeah, like, like a big, big picture. Uh, the, the, the milestone, no? Yes, they, they tell the milestone, <laughs> exactly, thank you. No, you should say the full quote. <laughs> no, I don't know in my heart, but yeah. The, um, what, I, what I intend to say in the, in the show, it's also like these objects tell us how we live, no? With what things do we acquire and what, in what plate do I eat my food? In what chair do I sit down and read? In what house the rug I have in my house, no? The glass, I drink water and... Um, and then maybe the 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 the, 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 the English word, no? But then also like then time goes super fast, no? And then all these objects tell us of the technology, no? Or the people who were behind of the of these objects. So I think that it's important to make a stop in time and then just gather all these objects and then when time goes look back and then you can make um, uh, a new evaluation, you would say, you know? Mm -hmm. So, because I think it's important, uh, when it comes into a museum, mm -hmm. uh, even more so than being at a gallery or a fair, you can't touch it. You, you don't have a sense of the function at all. I mean, you know, okay, a cup is a cup, but you don't know if it's a good cup or if it's a bad cup, uh, and it's irrelevant. It, the idea, the concepts behind it need to be strong enough so that it is able, you're able to have a conversation uh, and, and think and reflect on why is this important now? Why am I looking at this chair or this cup? Is it, is it because you know we no longer use chairs or cups or we no longer use something and we used to and why are we changing as a culture? Yeah, yeah, and like what's what's interesting, it's like what you're saying in the museum. There's a chair, but then you can't sit on the chair. No, it's just to look at the chair, or you can't drink from the cup. But then you have the idea, and then this idea, or what the museum or the curator or the show is trying to tell you. No, it's like who was behind this chair and how did this chair was made, or what the chair is trying to tell me, or this chair next to this other chair, or this other piece of furniture, or piece of tableware, or whatever. No and what material is it done and why does it have this shape or this weight or this texture or this color or you not know, like you can read the object in so many other levels than in the everyday use that you just do in this automatic way of living no mm -hmm. so that's also interesting and that's why i think it's important it has to be in a museum also no like to have this other 
uh, type of um, conscious of the object and the value of the object also that you can read it in this new way, you know. So mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. it keeps on giving also, you know, these mm -hmm. everyday things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. We were also talking a little bit about uh, the, the assignment that you gave your students so when we were um, speaking with the director of the um, of, yeah, of the Anahuac, <laughs> Ricardo Salas, the director yeah. of the Universidad de Anahuac, that you will see the, their stand there at the beginning. And he was saying in the program, uh -huh. at a certain point in the education, the student needs to decide, am I going towards craft uh -huh. or industry? And that this is, we were talking a little bit about um, academia right now and uh -huh. how to teach design right yeah and do you have to make a choice yeah and what we were saying it's like you industrial designers like in Mexico City it's not that you have to make a choice but for in a natural way we now go to more semi craft no or low tech industry or not big companies not like uh, it was a nice comparison that we were talking also in your show. You have big companies, you have Apple, you have uh, North Face, no? Yes. And in my show, it's the designer's company, no? Or the designer plus and uh, craftsmen working together, or just the name of the designer, no? Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that in not an organic way, but what's been happening in, in, in Mexico, in the industrial design in Mexico, it's going more towards the the low tech or the craft way, but now it's opening more, you know? So it's interesting, like now, big companies are starting to look at the at the designers in Mexico, and I mean, let's hope it's young, you know? It's like a young, not so young, but young uh, discipline, that's, uh, let's hope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, I think it's, uh, even if the schools are <laughs> teaching a kind of single method, mm -hmm. um, maybe more UX design or more industrial design or product design. Um, it's the designers who seem to be leading the ability to combine. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to be both social impact and uh, do mass produced work. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> no, that's, I got lost in so many ideas. But uh, yeah, that, that's very interesting that in a way I thought not that the Mexican show is more analog and yours more tech, no? But it's also interesting to have a, a look at both parts of a territory, you know? And, um, and what you were saying, people go to California, yes, of course, of the weather, also Mexico, no? But also because of the industry, no? And here in Mexico, we have a lot of industry, but also we have a lot of the low-tech, handmade way to go, no? So it's a... Um, it's incredible how, okay, we went one way, one direction, but now it's just like, let's see, like in 40 years, what's gonna happen next, you know? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. that's interesting. I mean, for us, we've had to change uh, our collecting methods, too. So, let's take, for example, uh, the first Apple laptop had a um, interface designed by Susan Kerr mm -hmm. that had graphic user icons that were uh, metaphors for what is in the physical world a paper folder, mm -hmm. a trash can, um, you know, the bomb to say, okay, you just crashed your computer. And so we think that the hardware is, okay, it's, it's interesting, but the real uh, design uh, moment that we cannot forget, and how do we collect this? Because, you know, once, once this computer comes off, it's very hard to turn it back on. I mean, and I know what's inside. A 20-year-old computer is even harder to turn back on. And if you're a museum, we are only telling half a story if we only focus on the hardware. Yes. Because our relationship to this piece is actually through the software and the design of the software. And so for museums, we had to really think hard about how to collect this. Yeah. Um, and there's an immaterial aspect to it, mm -hmm. too, that's changing. Uh, even that's museums are not like, no? like yes. immaterial and ethereal, like it goes away. And then that's very interesting also because of I think the, the importance is like not to forget, not to have this memory and to mm -hmm. also like, okay, this is happening in the 80s and then it's 2018 and this <laughs> graphic interface, the bomb, you know, that's yeah. <laughs> and it was a way of expressing in a graphic that now new generations don't know that uh, that existed, no, right. or that, that use anymore, <laughs> no, like it's a new interface also, no? Yes. 
but then uh, what you were saying about the collecting, no? So I think we, we should go back to the um, to the collecting essence, and I'd love if you could tell us a little bit about how the um, the museum collection started, no? And how do you go like the program every year, acquiring things, or what's the main uh, focuses of that collection? No, sure. Um, so. SFMOMA was founded in 1935, but then started collecting architecture and design and media art or video art okay. in uh, the late 80s. It was two new departments. They had always collected painting and sculpture and then added two new departments okay. in the 80s. And so, you know, for that's, uh, us, it's a, a roughly 40 year, 30, 40 year period where we've been uh, collecting. And what is nice for us, especially given where we are in proximity mm -hmm. to Silicon Valley, is uh, we really collect architecture, mm -hmm. uh, mostly conceptual architecture, uh, furniture, really only chairs, uh, product design, mostly software integrated product design, uh -huh. and graphic design. And those are the four uh, uh, disciplines where we're really focusing and because they have been so affected by the new digital tools. So mm -hmm. we really are. Uh, we have some works that are older and early 20th century, but mostly it's late 20th century to now. Okay. And um, the moment we knew, you know, designers knew computers were coming and could imagine a new world, then the computers land and everything is so difficult again and kind of basic. And now we're quite sophisticated with these tools. Um, and so I think our collection really captures this moment quite well. Um, in terms of collecting, we uh, have what is called an accessions committee or a collecting committee, and it's made up of designers, collectors, um, just enthusiasts, people who want to learn more about design, and um, it's like 25 people, and they give in to a fund, and that fund becomes our budget, our purchasing budget. And from that uh, purchasing budget, we every four year, uh, every <laughs> every year, four times a year, we uh, present to them a collection of works we would like to spend their money with, right? And so we do a whole presentation. Why why is it important now? Why is it connect to our collection? How many different exhibitions we could envision it in? What who's it in conversation with? Um, and then the committee has the power to vote and they you know, either approve or don't. So it's, it's on us to present it in a way that we think is very clear and, and makes it uh, apparent that it would be a good connection to our collection, uh, but they have the power to okay. vote it in or out. And for example, in this <laughs> power of voting, how does it go? It's like always the uh, win majority. Win. <laughs> it's a majority. Yeah, but and we have good discussions. Uh -huh, exactly. Uh, a great committee, and I think because everyone has different perspectives. Uh -huh. There's some people who know more about architecture, some who know more about graphic design, you know, etc. Um, we have really good, intelligent discussions um, because sometimes we have a work that is so obvious and fits so well uh -huh. with our collection. Sometimes we're pushing a little bit of like. Let's, let's try something a little outside of our comfort zone. <laughs> and then why? And, yeah, and why? Uh -huh. uh, but it helps that it's a majority, so you know, it's very rare that it's unanimous. Okay, okay. And so, for example, you're here in the yeah. design section, no? Yeah. And then it's like, not that the museum curators are buying right now, no? But it's like, you, you learn, you see what you're, what's happening, and then like in the future, it will be like you present somebody, no? You present yes. a piece of design. It's a very long process. I, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, that's where my next question goes, no? Yeah. Like, for example, as a museum curator and as how all these, uh, the board and how you have to present it, it's like it's so much different from a private collector. Yes. No? That's how, yes. An immediate, I want it, I'll take it, and right. no? But yes. But it's also interesting, like, it's not that it's a slow market, but it is a slow purchase, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. But then it's, you have also the power to see and acknowledge what's interesting, you know? So then in the near future, or <laughs> next future, no? Yeah. It would be a possibility to be in the collection of the you know? So yes. the whole process takes about a year to two years. A year to two years. not. Yeah. No, that's, and then with the so private... <laughs> No, but it's interesting because with the opposite of a private collection, it takes just 
yeah, the impulse of the credit card. Credit card. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what's interesting, it's the, the museum in the end validates also what we were saying, you know, the, the artist or the designer or the object, mm -hmm. and it gives it a new value, you know, mm -hmm. like an added, um, and then also a money-wise value, you know, like it, mm -hmm. the, it starts to higher, no? Yeah. But we can't ignore that. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a reality, no? And, and yeah. that's the, the commercial yeah. exchange, and that's that's the market. That's how it goes, no? But but also, like, why do you think? I mean, we're talking the marketplace. It's important for a museum to have a collection, no? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. focus on design. Well, yes and no. I mean, <laughs> we were noticing. Okay, let's say in America there are at least. Uh, 10 museums collecting architecture and or design, uh -huh. at least. At least. And in Mexico, uh, very few, right? I could just <laughs> mention one that was private and now it's public, and she will not right. like it's the, the first that's coming, and I mean, mm -hmm. we wish, I think Mexico City is one of the cities that has the most museums in the world, no? like yeah. almost Guinness record. <laughs> and there's no design museum, no? Yeah. And then there's no interest to in collecting design, no? Mm -hmm. But that, that's, mm -hmm. for example, the Archivo initiative is interesting that started as a private collection and now it's open to the public, no? So it's in between, it's not a big museum institution mm -hmm. and it doesn't have all this process, but it's, um, it's this private that now it's open to the public, to students, that they can go and see the objects and almost touch them, no? In a, in a new way, no? which I think is always uh, a beautiful way to ar arrive at a public collection is almost through the private eye. Um, uh -huh. uh, you know, we were saying a little bit earlier that we are, we are all actually collectors. I mean, you, have, you make a decision about what toothbrush <laughs> you're going to, you know, uh, use. And if we use uh, Cecilia's kind of metaphor of, of being a snapshot of your your own domestic collection um, and what how that reflects you, um, if you go a kind of larger scale mm -hmm. of uh, a private collector maybe who is thinking about okay one day I'm I really want to focus on one aspect um, I don't know Dutch design or something and I'm going to go deep and, and learn a lot and and then hopefully one day that becomes a, a public collection. I, I could share it, the knowledge and the, yeah. the object to the public, no? uh -huh. Which is the Archivo mm -hmm. model. It's uh, a, a very subjective collection, collection mm -hmm. right? And uh, sometimes that can start a, a public collection once it becomes a collection. Then you have curators who come and say, okay, I'm going to build upon this very subjective collection exactly. and broaden it. What do we need? Them. No, how yeah. how do we make it stronger, or how do we uh, what's missing, mm -hmm. or how to be more objective in terms of cultural history? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I got lost again, but um, <laughs> no, but that, that's it. The, the focus on my show was that no, that was the main question. No, like why is there no institution in Mexico that starting to gather all these objects or starts to write the, this history of, uh, of design in, in Mexico, no? And so then it all comes back to this, no? To collecting and to the private collection that then becomes a public collection, no? But then it's said easy, but it's not easy, no? It's not a... Um, mm -hmm. Well, then there are also, uh, like, architects. Mm -hmm. um, the example of Baragon and the archives that actually exist in another country, mm -hmm. um, which thankfully they have been saved. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, you know, so students uh, who can go visit a Baragon house cannot go visit the drawings. So they have to fly to <laughs> right, right, um, to Europe. Uh -huh. Yeah, but 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 it's it's this tricky question also, no? Because in the end, somebody had the interest. Yeah to archive and to collect all this um, legacy of Barragan and to have it in a safe place that in Mexico there was a little bit of interest or I mean I don't know the whole story but it was like a little bit dispersed no so I think the the value of collecting is that you conserve it and then the best part if it's a public collection it's, that it's available for everybody no like if it's a private collection 
at some point it's still private and then it's open to it's open to uh, at the beginning to friends and family no and then it's open to it. well i think it's also i think you are thinking so much about this and it's mm -hmm. a little bit of your role here in mm -hmm. zonamaco the yeah. art fair <coughs> yes um but you have directed the design portion of it mm -hmm. and uh how how do you even start to think about developing an interest in collecting design so that it maybe one day becomes, or how do you instill this uh, importance locally in preserving a cultural yeah. moment? And you have to start with recognizing that collectors who are uh, very comfortable collecting art uh -huh. should think about collecting yeah. design right. and even taking a chance on pieces that are uh, maybe even not functional. Mm -hmm. You know, pieces that are very conceptual, but really get at uh, some of the concerns uh, mm -hmm. that we are all discussing today. Do we embrace technology? Do we not? Do we fear it? You know, and, and some of this you, you capture in pieces that would never go to market, but are very conceptual. But and the beauty of these conceptual pieces, and then there's also the line between art and design, but it's like they don't have a function, but they have a function, and it's just to have it there, and it makes me happy. It's not art, it's design, no? but then it's, um, and I just want to have it. No? So yeah, like my, my work here, it's been five years now, and it's just like having both, like trying to make the, the conscious of collecting design, no? and for the big collectors, you're saying the art collector to come and have a look at design and have high-end design, no? and have these pieces that are like not functional, but very functional in the way that they tell the, the story, the moment, the, uh, the artist or the designer, but also to have the other part that's the student's part or the, I say, like shops, which is interesting because the shops, I, what I ask is to have it an addition or to have like it's the 2018 the piece of, the, of this year, no? So in the end, it's also the young collector, no? And it's also the, the young generation that in the future, they will be the ones that have this, um, this, how do you say, um, this challenge to, yeah. to continue, no? I, I mean, I think if everyone has not read it yet, uh, Carla Fernandez has a beautiful manifesto. And the manifesto basically is, I mean, it's, it's wonderful, it's political, and this is a very, um, a poor way of summarizing it, but it's the importance of shifting from everybody not becoming just a consumer, mm -hmm. but thinking about yourself as a collector, someone who really should think about something that you will have for a very long time and you take care of it and um, it's it has you cherish it to you, right? right? Yeah. Not a kind of disposable, oh, I just need a quick shaver or whatever, but really take care to make every decision in everything that you uh, purchase or, mm -hmm. or somehow collect. Um, don't just be a consumer, be a collector, right? That's beautiful, yeah. <laughs> So I, I think we start with some questions. I can think of a designed object with a heavy Californian imprint, and that is design thinking. I wonder if you have ever considered collecting, or what have you discussed about it? Um, okay, so design thinking, we have discovered, is uh, can be defined so many different ways. And it's also being very much appropriated in a commercial uh, use. Um, and so if we really look back at the, who really thought up design thinking? For us, we thought very carefully about this. We look at the Ulm School in Germany that with Dieter Rams and the notion of uh, collaboration with your fabricator, with the company and the designer, kind of three trio, and how important that was, uh, that everybody understands a kind of design-led project. Um, then we think also a little bit about IDEO, uh, that's a company that uh, was one of the first people to think about designing hardware uh, for computers. And they were very interested in studying how everybody uses uh, objects that you don't think are designed. Uh, an example in the exhibition that we use, so you know, you, you might have long hair, you might use a pencil to just you know quickly hold your hair up in a bun. So, the pencil wasn't meant to be used for that, but things that you, if you're a designer, you observe how people actually use something that wasn't intended to, to be used in that way in a very different way. And so the design thinking 
um, method that IDO talks about is what's the real question? You know, do you really just need something to hold up your hair? And we don't really need to think about a, a new hair product. Um, what, like, let's unpack what you're really asking. You know, let's let's find the real question. And so that in our exhibition, that's how we really get to design thinking. But it is used so broadly. You have to be very careful. <laughs> can get confused what we were t t talking before like it could be like this consumer design thinking storytelling sustainability yes. no yes. so it's also like interesting to have the the core of the real meaning of design thinking no yes and make sure that designers own their own thinking and not the you know the company you know? oh yeah because then everybody was design thinking and it's yes. just creative thinking and it's a way of yes solving a problem in a creative way but not design like it's not saving the world is I'm thinking, right? right. But that's right. when it's wrongly used, you know? Yes. So, see? And, no? <laughs> Somebody has another question? Um, have you ever deemed yourself as a shaper of the future, uh, of the past and, and the future? Because I mean, whatever, what would be collected, uh, either will, it, it will, be lost or it would be damaged or destroyed at, at all. So do you think yourself, of yourself and of and your, the comedy you were talking about and your team as shapers of the past and the future? Uh, yes, I mean it's, it's a role of, uh, we can't collect everything. So uh, w there would not be enough storage in the world if we were really to take a real <laughs> snapshot of everything that we use, right? And so we have to make decisions. Uh, what what is the object that maybe is the most transformative of a cultural moment? You know, maybe it is the iPhone, and we don't need every cell phone, but the one that maybe embraced design the best. Um, uh, so yeah, we have to make decisions of not taking everything. And in that regard, yes, you're shaping history. What 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 was not picked? You know what? So yes. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's a big response, uh, responsibility. Uh -huh. Yeah, and we try to make sure uh, with every exhibition we sign, you know, my name, so that it is clear. It's one curator's perspective. It's not, you know, maybe uh, an American perspective. You know, a big, broad, uh, kind of national perspective. It's one one person who knows, you know, has a kind of education and design history who has made this. <laughs> and also, um, do you think do you, you were talking about collecting softwares and hardwares? Um, do you think a software will ever be as as perceived as I don't know a, a, a film or or um, a painting, a, a, a table? I don't know. I think design right now I, I, is probably the best reflection of all the arts of painting, of photography, maybe not photography, uh, but some of the more classical sculpture. Right now, design is translating our cultural relationship to uh, technology, I think, in the best of all of the arts. And I think this is a very important moment for design. Yeah. Thanks. Somebody else has a question? What do you think that is the criteria that must have a design to be perceived in a museum? The important things, the critical things, the things that transcend to be part of a museum? Uh, for SFMOMA, uh, so I'm the fifth curator in, in our museum collecting architecture and design. So um, I come in to this role and there's already 5,000 objects that exist. And I think it's important not to think about taking the design collection 180 degrees in a very different direction, but building upon what is already there. Um, and so we were very strong in conceptual architecture. And how do we build upon what already exists? Um, the criteria that we think about, my whole team, is um, can, you know, this is just a, a simple little exercise that we use is, Okay, name three exhibitions where you might put this exhibition, you know, this object in. Can you think of three different ways to get at different issues? 
whether it's fabrication or a kind of social moment or um, a legacy that is in conversation with uh, design history. You know, what? How many different ways can you curate it in an exhibition, um, and how does it connect to what already exists in our collection? Thank you. design and in art, the name always has a, a heavy part. So how much opportunity do newcomers have if they're not famous? <laughs> like to get into a museum? Yeah. Uh, well, I think they, well, I think about how to answer this because we acknowledge, especially in this landscape of Zonamaco, the role of the gallery in um, collecting work as well, but I think curators can find someone, you know, both through the gallery system, but also just through word of mouth, or um, you just happen upon it. It's both. Alguien más tiene una pregunta? I can, I can translate that. Uh, so the question is, what do you think, or what do I? So let me make sure, uh, how can uh, contemporary Mexican design be more in conversation globally? Um, from my perspective. <laughs> well, I thought it was amazing to hear the director of the university say uh, that he is investing in a booth in uh, international art fairs and bringing all the students and their pro uh, projects to these international fairs and they learn how to talk about those products, you know, to an international audience, but uh, that's a very small example. I mean, I think we've talked about this a little bit about the role of like Design Week and Design Abierto. Um, design Week has, I hope I'm not uh, making any kind of political <laughs> anything, but Design Week has a, a lot more uh, funding <laughs> behind it and it has have the or has the ability to bring in some international curators or journalists, whereas Design Abierto really is a bit more of a local conversation. But couldn't couldn't they maybe combine so that um, really bringing some curators here and having a, a conversation with local curators? And I think it's it's very important to try to channel the funding in that direction. I mean, that's how we met, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's why you're here now. Yes. No? <laughs> Which is great. Una más? Oh, yeah. No? Okay, Jennifer, thank you very much for being here with us. I think it was uh, just the beginning of yes. a lovely yes. conversation. I mean, I will just put in a plug. Um, so our uh, collection is uh, heavily California, America, and we have some concentrations in Japanese design and Dutch design. We've been thinking a lot more about Mexican design more uh, recently, and um, through coming here in the last two years, I've been working closely with Lanza Atelier, local architects, and they will be having an exhibition at SMOMA about uh, emerging talent um, that opens at the end of March. So. Which is great, no? Like you have a show of Mexican <laughs> architects in the SF MoMA. I think it's so it's opening yes. for you. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you very Thank much. You very Thank much. you. Grazie a tutti per la domanda.